Um, for, for a little bit of context about us, we started um, over two years ago now, actually um, out of a research project at Stanford University, where we were looking at how we could simplify the financial aid process. Um, and in particular, we looked at the um, external scholarship application process, uh, because that was something that we had all relied on, um, both through uh, undergrad and, and, and graduate school. Um, two years on from that, we now work with uh, students and counselors at one in three high schools uh, across the US um, and have not only uh, local and, and national scholarships, uh, but also the ability for students to submit um, their uh, government uh, aid applications uh, and also find information about uh, college institutional aid. Uh, and we'll show you all of that uh, on, on the platform later. We, um, we often get asked on these webinars how we're different to sites like FastWeb, scholarships.com, uh, Unigo, uh, and others that you likely will have come across and, and know. Um, and so I also wanted, before we go into the demo, to, to give a little bit of uh, context on, on that. Um, and there's five main differences. Uh, the first is that we never ever sell student data. Uh, I want to be really clear on that um, because that was a frustration I always had when, when I used FastWeb as I would find I was suddenly getting lots of emails from um, lots of different sites. Um, so the only time we ever share any kind of personally identifiable information is if a student clicks submit on an application uh, and at that point we share it with that scholarship provider uh, and that provider alone. Uh, number two is that we uh, vet all of the financial aid uh, on our site. So specific to scholarships, we check each scholarship that is added. Uh, and the vast majority of our scholarships are ones that are recommended by counselors, uh, in particular local scholarships. Um, and one of the things we'll show on this is also how you can add your uh, local scholarships onto Going Mary. Um, but again, the frustration I always had when I was applying for scholarships is I would click onto ones that were out of date um, or um, weren't, uh, you know, uh, didn't even exist still. Um, and so that was something that was really important to us to, to fix. Um, the third reason is that the majority of scholarships at all of the other uh, financial aid applications ongoing, Mary, you can, as a student, apply to directly. Um, so with other sites, you get redirected and have to start the applications all over again, or you have to download a PDF to submit via snail mail. With, with Going Mary, the whole application is hosted on our site. Uh, the fourth uh, reason is that you as counselors have a portal that allows you to actually track what your students are doing in addition to managing your local scholarships. And then fifth and finally is that um, we now added uh, this ability for students to apply to their government uh, aid uh, as well through Going Merry. So what I'll do now is actually come on to the um, uh, webinar and, and show you uh, how everything works from the, the student side. So we'll start with the, um, the student demo account, uh, and I'm actually gonna go straight through to their profile. So what you're looking at now, as I say, is what your students will see after they create an account. And it takes them about 30 seconds uh, to do that. Uh, they just, to be clear, go to goingmary.com and, and click on uh, sign up. Um, and the first step, is filling out their profile. That's what then allows us to match them with the financial aid that they're eligible for. Um, I, I won't spend too much time. Uh, you will know what sort of profiles look like and how they work, but it's really standard uh, Q&A format for each of these different sections. And what I would highlight is that all of this information is optional. So students don't have to fill out anything they don't want to. Uh, but the more information they do fill out, the more scholarships in particular we're able to match them with. Um, and the only section of the profile that's a little bit different to that is this documents tab. Uh, and that's where students can upload supporting material that they want to use in their applications. So you can just actually come to this upload button in the top right hand side, select a document, let's say they want to add the uh, FAFSA form, and they can then just upload it from their computer. It's also where they can request recommendation letters uh, simply by entering in the recommender's email address. 
and clicking send request. And then the recommender is sent uh, an email with instructions and a link through which they can upload um, their letter. The, the final thing I'll, I'll point out on this page is that anything uploaded by the student, they can download, but anything uploaded by a third party like a recommender or, or you as a counselor remains confidential. So the student cannot view it, uh, but they can attach it blindly to their application. And we'll show you how to do that in a second. But as I say, step one for the student is filling out their profile. Step two is then coming to their scholarships tab. Uh, and that's where we look through our database of scholarships to find the ones that your students are eligible for based on their profile. And you can see for each one, it has the award amount, our estimate, uh, sorry, the, the time until the deadline, our estimate of how long uh, the application itself will take, and then finally here, whether the students are able to apply ongoing, Mary, or whether um, it, they have to eventually go to an external site. And that, along with these filters at the top where they can filter by you know, where they apply or by how long the application uh, will take, or even at the end here, by how many other uh, students have applied to the scholarship, gives students a, a really clear way to prioritize um, uh, which scholarships they want to spend their time on. I probably highlight in particular, particularly as it's showing at the top here, but we also, as part of this, have um, scholarship bundles. Uh, and that's where students can apply to multiple scholarships using the same application. Uh, and they're created because we found scholarships that all ask the same application questions. Um, and we've looked through our database to, to match them, like with you know, safe driving or social media, career goals, community service, and so on. Uh, and, and so we've combined them into one application. So students can do that all uh, together. Just as a caveat on those, it obviously makes them easier to apply, but just to manage expectations, it also means that they're uh, uh, much more competitive because a lot of students do. Um, and so students, I, I would also recommend, you know, applying to these individual ones um, uh, as well. And you can see again, some of the, the different uh, ones that we have on the site. The other thing I'll just show briefly here is there is a toggle in the top left-hand corner where students can actually, um, ask to see all of the different scholarships that are available. So they don't need to always just rely on ones that are matched to their school, um, if for example, they want to just double check. Um, then there's a couple of other sections I wanna highlight here. The first is the college uh, financial aid. Uh, and that's where um, we got a lot of feedback from counselors saying that it would be helpful for students to also find out about institutional aid as that's often you know, a really big part of their financial aid package. And so what we've added here is um, information on the different merit scholarships uh, and financial aid policies of different schools. For example, you see the, the merit scholarships from Tampa, um, the financial aid policies for UVA, Center Colleges merit scholarships, um, Rice University, um, Sanford Northwestern, other universities that we will work with. And students can um, click onto those to find more information about uh, their financial aid uh, and to request from the college a, um, a more personalized financial aid estimate. The reason, by the way, these are showing up as, as a red X is because in this demo, I'm a, a senior. Um, and these are more intended for juniors who are creating their target college lists at the moment. And it's to give students a sense of what the affordability of each of their um, uh, colleges is. The next section I'll show is um, the local scholarships. And, and this is something that we separated because students always have the best chance of winning local scholarships. Whenever we speak to students, we always really recommend that they start with that um, within their financial aid applications. Um, and so this section, they'll see scholarships that are specific to their high school or to their residential area. And if you have any uh, local uh, scholarships uh, at your school, uh, then you can add them on to Going Merry as a, as a totally uh, free service. Um, and uh, I, I can follow up if that's um, of uh, interest afterwards. If a student wants to apply to a scholarship, they just click onto it. Um, that then takes them through uh, to a different page. I'm just going to X out of the last one. It takes them through to a scholarship page where they can find out more information uh, about the scholarship. Um, including, if I scroll down, the eligibility requirements. 
And so what you can see here is that this scholarship is for students at the Going Merry Academy. Um, that's obviously a made up school, but I, I highlight that because uh, if you have any scholarships that are just for your uh, students or for your um, uh, high school, uh, then we can add them on to Going Merry and only your students will be able to apply. Uh, and it will then give them one place from which to apply to their um, uh, to all of their different financial aid options. So step one we talked about was building the profile. Step two was then finding the scholarships that they are eligible for. Step three is actually applying. Uh, and again here, this is uh, something uh, that for me, when I was applying for scholarships for, for graduate school, I found super frustrating on other sites uh, because this would be where I would get uh, redirected. Um, and often I would sort of end up, yeah, literally snail mailing PDFs. And so with Going Merry, we made it really simple. The student just needs to click onto the application. It then opens up and what you'll see here is it auto populates or we auto populate all of the student's profile information so they don't have to re-enter anything. And they're able to attach any supporting documents, including uh, blindly uh, the one added by uh, their counselor earlier. And so suddenly within, I know call that, 30 seconds of starting the application, the, the student's done 75% plus of it. And they can just focus on these additional questions, answer them, click next and click submit. Uh, and at that point, there's nothing else they need to do. We then transfer the application to the scholarship provider um, and uh, the student can just uh, go back to check for more scholarships um, or they can actually just check on the status of their individual applications uh, through the applications tab where they can see ones that are in draft form or indeed ones um, where they've submitted it. Uh, and you can see the different statuses here, you know, ones where unfortunately the student hasn't won, ones are still under review, and then of course, uh, where they have been successful. Um, and each time your student wins a scholarship, we'll also notify you as um, their counselor if you have a counselor account on uh, Going Merry. So that's um, how the scholarship uh, process works. As I say, that's always been the core of Going Merry. Um, and um, alongside it, the students have a dashboard which is kind of their sort of home base uh, for when they're using us, which gives them a view of the different uh, uh, scholarships that they've been matched with, what applications they've made, um, and uh, also shows them their draft applications and, and upcoming deadlines. In addition, on this dashboard, uh, one of the new things that we've added more recently is the ability for students to look at the different financial aid on offer at different uh, universities. Uh, so they can type in any of their uh, target colleges um, to uh, check uh, what their likely financial aid will be from the college uh, and what um, their future could look like. So if I added um, UC Berkeley, for example, uh, you can see it will estimate what my real cost is going to be. So this will take um, the household income range that I added in my profile. And then it uses Department of Education data um, to predict what I as a student will actually have to pay. So this $9,000. And then it will also show my estimated salary and therefore um, the uh, value uh, of the college. Uh, and so uh, again, particularly for your junior students that are just coming up with their target college lists, this is a really good way of just showing them what is gonna be affordable uh, by looking at the different financial aid policies of different colleges. Um, in addition to that, we also have a tool that allows students to actually budget for college. Um, this is something particularly for juniors, uh, sorry, for seniors at the moment. Um, they have a way of just being able to enter in their university, what the total cost of attending is, what their financial aid uh, award is, and then splitting up how they think they're gonna pay for it uh, across um, different uh, attributes. Uh, and one of the things we launched more recently is the way that they can then find um, part-time jobs as well. You know, unfortunately with everything that's happening, that's um, uh, obviously not, not as easy anymore, but I um, uh, wanted to, to flag that as well. Uh, the final thing I'll, I'll mention is, is a new thing that we're launching um, 
And uh, as a result of that, it's, a, it's the only paid product on the site. So everything that we've looked at is totally free to students, uh, but we're just testing a, a new um, uh, product, which requires a bit more work and also uh, connecting a student with a uh, advisor to help them through uh, the financial aid process. And we kind of think of this a bit like um, filing taxes, uh, where we can actually help the, the students do it. Uh, and this is where there's a form for them to be able to fill out to apply for all of their federal and state aid, um, institutional aid, and also get matched with their external scholarships. Um, we make very clear on the site that it's totally free to, to apply to all of their you know, federal aid and state aid um, uh, for free through the government sites. Um, but on this package that includes uh, a financial aid appeal letter and sort of guidance through the process, uh, we offer that for a price of $100 at the moment, um, as I say, for a test. So just wanted to, to flag that. Um, as I say, everything else on the site uh, is very much um, as, a, as a free service and anything to do with scholarships uh, will, will always be 100% uh, free. So that's um, really from the student side, how they can use Going Mary. So as I say, what we really um, hope uh, for junior students in particular is they can use this target college school to see the real cost of each of their colleges and then find the financial aid um, needed to, to cover it. What I'm going to do now is actually switch onto our provider portal. Um, one of the things I thought it'd be useful to flag is for any of you that have local scholarships, how we can help you with that. Um, one of the things, and, and I was asked at the start to to you know, make sure that the context of um, you know, school closures and social distancing at the moment. Um, one of the things that we've seen a lot of interest in more recently is from counselors that want help managing their local scholarships that are pen and paper based. Um, and so we've um, built out a process where you as counselors can actually add um, your uh, local scholarships onto Going Merry. Um, again, this is a, a totally free of charge service. Um, and then your students can apply uh, online. Uh, and then we will give you access to a provider account that will then allow you to download the applications that they've submitted uh, and send them on to the local providers or, or if you needed to um, print them out and uh, send them via snail mail or, or attach them to emails. But we wanted a way to, to enable um, you to avoid having to sort of drop packages off at students' houses and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, so that's what happens through the provider portal. So what you're looking at here is the dashboard. Uh, and this is what the big scholarship organizations that we work with use as well. So we work with um, you know, small uh, local scholarships like the Rotary Club and Kiwanis and um, even small memorial scholarships. And then also with big corporations like Hewlett Packard and Dell and, and Motorola. Um, and they all use this to review the applications they receive. They spend a lot of time on this applications tab where for each of their individual scholarships, they can see the uh, application activity. And this again would be the same for your scholarship. So if there are ones that you administer at your high school or there are ones that you um, help with, you would see for each of them how many applications they've received. And you'd actually be able to click onto them to see the individual applications and review them online if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, again, um, you know, reacting to the, the current time, what we're seeing a lot of is um, local scholarships that are done on pen and paper. Um, and uh, so, you know, you don't want to have to teach a local provider how to use a new site or, or provide them with a login. Um, in that instance, you as um, a counselor can actually uh, sort of be the provider for all the different scholarships. And what you can then do is just download all of the applications into a zip file. Uh, and distribute them however you prefer. Uh, there's also an Excel option if that's something that, that you find easier. Um, but we've really spent a lot of time just thinking about how we can provide the student with this really easy online experience so they're not having to do everything by a pen and paper, um, but also make it possible for the local scholarship providers um, to evaluate and review the applications in hard copy as they uh, you know, have done in the past. Um, and then finally, I'm going to go on to our uh, counselor portal. Uh, and, and this is um, something that we added uh, based on uh, feedback from counselors. Um, there was really two main bits of feedback that we got from counselors. 
when we do uh, workshops across the US. And, and first was that it was you know, difficult to manage local scholarships. But secondly, was that it was difficult to actually um, track what your students were doing. Um, and so this is something you can actually do through your counselor portal, uh, which again is a free service. Um, if you do want to uh, track your students and, and see their scholarship applications and support them, uh, again, you just go to www.goingmary.com and, and click on sign up. Um, and again, it's about a 30 seconds process to create your account. Uh, once you've done that, um, you can come to the students tab where you can see for each of your students how many applications they've started and how many they've submitted. So for example, obviously Beth at the top here, uh, you can see that she has submitted three applications in addition uh, to the four uh, in draft form. And then finally, through this actions column on the right hand side, you can also support all of your students' applications by uploading transcripts or recommendation letters. And, and those, as we looked at in the past, are saved within the student profile within their documents tab, um, where uh, the students can then attach them to applications, but again, cannot ever view them or download them. So it remains 100% uh, you know, confidential. I also just want to point out when we're on this page, uh, you can see a lot of class of 2020 students, um, but on the second page, uh, you know, lots of younger students. There, there are scholarships available ongoing, Mary, for all high school students, so all years of high school, and then all um, college uh, undergraduates uh, as well. Um, and so if you have younger students that are um, thinking about the financial aid process already, then they absolutely can get applying. Um, I would say the majority of the, the local scholarships are for seniors, but again, the big corporate ones like you know, Hewlett Packard and um, Sam's Club and H&M, those are open to uh, all students. Um, and again, as we mentioned also at the start, um, a lot of juniors use Going Right to view the different uh, institutional aid uh, on offer. I'm gonna skim through the next uh, couple of tabs. Um, the, the one I'll show very briefly is just where you can actually come and suggest any scholarships if you find ones um, that uh, aren't uh, ongoing, Mary, um, you know, particularly for local ones. I would flag though, if you have um, programs that you administer at the high school level, um, then uh, that's something where it's easier if you just reach out to us directly and we can help you um, sort of, you know, add a 60 page PDF package and actually turn that into individual scholarship applications for your students. Um, the next tab is, is a resources tab. Um, the, the sort of first half of this are ones that just explain to students what Going Merry is and how it works and, and have a, a sort of guide on how to use it. The, the bottom half are lesson plans. Um, and then guides more broadly to financial aid and, and FAFSA, um, and actually includes handouts that also uh, reference other scholarship websites so your students have the choice. And then wanted to flag in particular, uh, again, because uh, uh, obviously the timing that we do this webinar is, is, is a very unusual one, uh, that we also have this checklist for each of your um, uh, you know, students, including uh, sophomores and, and juniors, that just um, highlights the steps that they can be taking uh, from home to minimize the impact of uh, school closures uh, and the like. Um, I'll end on the, on the final uh, couple of tabs here, but the first is where you can actually invite students. So you simply add in their email address, um, uh, and you can copy and paste it in bulk, click enter, and then click send invites. Um, and you then can also use this um, template, uh, copy and paste that and send that out to students if that's preferred. That's actually the same email that they'll get uh, if you uh, send the invite to them directly. I do want to be clear though, as we're on this page, you don't need to invite students um, for them to be able to sign up. You don't need to have your school approved or anything like that. Students can always just uh, go to goingmary.com and sign up themselves. Uh, but we found a, a really good way is to invite students all at the same time, particularly if you also have your local scholarships on the platform, um, so they can all um, be at the same point in the process. Uh, and then the final thing on the counsellor portal is something we added um, more recently based on feedback from counsellors that often the 
scholarships page of their high school website could be um, have a sort of uh, list of messy links. And so we've created this um, real time scholarship table that you can actually add to your sites that will show your local scholarships. Um, and, and then the more um, sort of wider uh, reaching scholarships like the state ones, regional ones, and eventually national ones. And so it means that your students and their parents have this one-stop shop for scholarships um, on your site as well. If you do want to add that, all you actually have to do is, is copy this line of code um, and, and then send that on to your administrator um, or whoever it is that's in charge of your school site. Uh, if you're at all like me, that will look quite intimidating, um, but it's actually something literally they'll be able to copy and paste and so it should take them sort of five minutes um, to add. Um, I'll actually just show um, for a second uh, if I come off the the, the screen share, um, and then I'm going to add a, another page. Um, one of the uh, other schools that we work with uh, that uses um, uses the, um, the the widget. So this is a school in. Uh, California that we work with and you can see on that high school um, page when you come down to the scholarships the table has all of their local scholarships which they manage on going Mary and then allows their students to be able to see those through their high school uh, site. Um, so I'm going to pause there in terms of the um, uh, part of uh, the process that's focused on on going Mary. I, I was asked at the site uh, sorry at the start to also um, just talk a little bit about the financial aid uh, appeal process um, uh, that a lot of students uh, and their families may you know, likely be considering at the moment. What we find, um, you know, broadly speaking, is the sort of three best reasons uh, for appealing um, for students is, is one, if they've got a better financial aid uh, offer uh, from another school that can often be used to um, you know uh, speak to the school that they maybe have as their first choice just to say look I'm you know I do really want to come here but um, uh, for financial reasons I, I have a better offer elsewhere. Uh, the second reason is if a student has got accepted to a school with a um, uh, higher profile uh, than another school they can often use that as a way um, to uh, increase their financial aid award. Uh, and then the third, which is most relevant to the moment, is if they've had a significant change in their financial situation. Um, you know, if a parent has lost a job or, or passed away. Um, clearly, at the moment, uh, that's something that unfortunately, you know, I think the, the latest stats was 26 million Americans have, uh, have gone through in the last uh, month. And so, um, you know, unfortunately, that sort of reason it's going to be very relevant to a lot of students a lot of students and their families um, so I do think um, you know in those cases it, it can definitely be worth uh, submitting an appeal uh, letter um, uh, and would highlight probably the best way of, of doing that is uh, a couple of different things so firstly the student should try to start by finding their uh, regional admissions counselor at that university. So with some universities that can be uh, very specific, it can be quite far reaching for others. Um, but, um, uh, you know, I, I'm calling in from, from New Jersey. So if I was uh, speaking to a university here, I might look for their um, New Jersey representative or it may if, you know, be more general, like say the Northeast or something like that, if it's um, a, a smaller university. But I would start by finding that person and reaching out to them directly. And I would make clear for the student that, you know, this is a positive process, that they really want to go to this college, um, but things have changed and, and the universities will be very aware of that. Um, and so that, um, uh, and highlight, you know, in a positive way, um, this change in circumstances has made it much harder for me to be able to afford your university. Um, and I think if you can provide supporting documents of the um, changes or, or the financial hardship um, and then equally uh, a monthly budget or, or something like that that shows why your ends frankly won't meet with the current offer 
that can be a really powerful starting point to reach out to the universities um, who, you know, at the moment are very aware uh, of the change in circumstances. Um, so that is how I would do it. I would, um, you know, we would recommend you reach out to the admissions person that's most relevant to you. Um, if you feel comfortable, if the student feels comfortable to do that over the phone, uh, we recommend starting there uh, and then following up with an email that highlights, um, you know, again, that you really want to go to that college. Um, and then the, the reasons that you have for um, requesting more financial aid and then evidence, um, if you can, on, um, on that. So I think that's probably the, the most relevant thing, um, you know, specific to uh, coronavirus um, at the, the moment. Uh, and so what I'll probably do here is, is pause and um, happy to take any questions. Uh, you know, I know I went through things that we discussed on Going Merry and um, quite quickly. So happy to talk about that. Happy also to talk about um, other parts of financial aid, whether it's student loans, um, or you know government aid uh, applications um, or um, any other tools that your students might find helpful so yeah i'll stop uh, stop here for, for any questions great thanks so much charlie so we've had um, a handful of questions come in and so i encourage folks to um, take a moment if you haven't posed a question and have something to be sure and do so um, but i'll go ahead and jump in and we'll just go down in the order in which they popped up um, so one of our attendees noticed that, that they've searched and don't see some of the well-known scholarships for LGBTQ folks, nor the Hispanic or um, Asian scholarships. And so I wondered if you could um, just touch on that. Yeah, so that's likely, um, you know, towards the end of April, a lot of the um, well-known uh, scholarships um, have actually hit their deadline. Um, and so um, what I think will likely be happening there is that um, those scholarships are, have hit their deadline for this year and we're in the process of adding them for, for next year. Um, one of the things we, we have to sort of balance is often when the applications haven't opened for some of these bigger scholarships, we don't want to be sending students to look at them because what we really want to do is focus them on how they can use their time most effectively now. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's probably a case that those haven't opened up yet for, for next year. Thank you. Um, so this next one you touched on, but if you can reiterate it, um, can sophomore students use Going Mary? Yeah, um, so I'll answer this um, a bit more broadly. We, we, um, we started Going Mary actually, um, uh, as I said, we was while we were graduates at, at Stanford University and um, I used to uh, help out at a, um, a, a local uh, school in, in San Jose. And um, we launched our pilot with them. Um, one of the exciting things we found was that students applied to sort of five times as many scholarships using Going Mary. Uh, but one of the weird things, uh, or th something I was surprised by, was their counselor said that um, all of their students had signed up, including their, all of their underclassmen. And I was kind of like, oh, well, that's probably not a very good use of uh, the younger students' time. And, you know, a lot of scholarships are for seniors. Um, and what they found was that it allowed their underclassmen to actually be more ambitious in their college choices because they were aware of the financial aid uh, options ahead of applying. Uh, and that's what we've also really tried to add out ongoing, Mary, um, in that section on college financial aid is the ability for younger students like sophomores, um, uh, juniors, to um, be aware of the different costs of colleges and then also use that tool that we um, uh, showed as well. Uh, that allows them to um, estimate the financial aid that they'll receive from each uh, college. And so it gives them um, a way of thinking about affordability at the start of the college process, uh, rather than uh, at the end when often, um, you know, they're in a, a more difficult situation. Thank you. Um, and then can you just repeat the number of schools that are currently um, in the US, this may have been in context of something else, um, the number of schools that are using this currently in the US. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're used by about 15,000 uh, high schools uh, across the US. Um, so it's um, uh, one in three um, high schools have um, students using us. Um, 
specific to councillors, we, we use by about seven and a half thousand uh, councillors as well. And, and that will vary from councillors who are managing all of their local scholarships um, on, on the programme. That's where I think, by the way, Going Mary works best is when you have your local scholarship, because that's then um, when you can tell your students, look, there's only one place you need to go to to worry about financial aid. Um, uh, so yeah, some of those seven and a half thousand will just be managing everything through us. And then others will just be using it as a way to track students and support their scholarship uh, activity for some of the bigger sort of national scholarships um, uh, that they do work with. I think this next question is a, um, your last answer is a good kind of segue into this question. It, um, it seems like you're dependent on counselors providing you with information about scholarships, um, even if these scholarships are publicly available. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. So. When we started out, um, which was in 2017, we, we'd done this pilot and we'd seen exciting results that um, students were applying to a lot more financial aid, winning more financial aid um, through Going Mary. And so we, we wanted to launch with as many scholarships as we could find. Um, what happened was we then found the databases that um, FastWeb, Unigo, uh, scholarships.com, College Board, Sally May, all of these other scholarship search sites use. And there's two, if you're interested, probably too much detail, but there's two main databases that they all use. One is called Wintergreen, one is called Peterson's. And so we um, looked at those databases. We were like, well, maybe we'll get started with this and, and you know, we can uh, show students all of those scholarships that are available. Uh, and what we honestly found was about one in 10 of those scholarships were like real and uh, were still valid. Like it was really 90% were either seemingly made up or um, out of date or were just not related to high school students um, or looked like scammy because they were, um, you know, you would, there was no essay, but you would get points if you completed surveys and did this and that. Um, and so we, we just didn't use that uh, database because um, you know, we knew from our own experience how frustrating that process was. Um, so what instead we've done is, um, you know, relied on um, uh, counselors to a certain degree to recommend scholarships to us, but we've also, you know, looked through ones where um, we know that they're real and they exist, or ones that they've reached out to us about being added. We've then actually verified that it is a legit scholarship and it's, you know, not just trying to get student information or anything like that. So, um, you know, I think we, we rely on counselors to a certain degree to recommend uh, scholarships to us. When it comes to local scholarships in particular, there's honestly no real way for us to find out about them. Um, you know, if you picture your local Rotary Club that again, maybe does things through a printed out application, um, those just aren't on the internet. Um, and we very early on decided that we wanted students to be able to find their local scholarships in particular, because again, those are the ones they have the best chance of winning. And so we spend a lot of time through the uh, provider portal and the counselor portal, trying to make it easy for you to manage your local scholarships um, and for other local providers, because then your students have those at one place. So, um, you know, I, I think we have built relationships with the, the big corporations that um, we've helped create new scholarships for, like um, some of the ones I've, I've already mentioned, you know, like Motorola and Dell. Um, we then obviously have all of the, the Gates and the Coca-Colas and, and, and those on the site, uh, but we also spend a lot of time uh, looking to add those local scholarships and, and helping counselors through that process. Um, sorry, that was a, a long answer, but it, it's um, kind of an important one of why we didn't want to just recreate another of those scholarship databases. Um, our next question is, are counselors grouped by school? So for example, if you have two counselors in the same building with separate accounts, will the student data be the same? Um, and to elaborate on that further, um, should I have one login for our school? So both counselors are looking at the same data. Got it. Yeah. So, um, Yes, is the sort of simple answer in terms of counselors being um, grouped by school. So um, at the moment, if you create a counselor account, it takes you about 30 seconds to sign it up. And then what we'll do is approve you um, 
uh, for that account. So we, we have to verify um, that your email address that you're signing up with is that of a counselor at your school. And we can do that by looking on your um, school site or uh, sometimes if we can't find it immediately, we'll ask you to provide um, you know, evidence of that um, by like linking to your um, listing or, or showing your um, uh, ID. Um, and that will then, once you've created that account, will link you immediately to all of the students at your high school who have signed up. Um, and we do that because when a student signs up, they have to enter in the high school as part of our onboarding. Um, and so any counselor that signs up by, at your school will be able to see the same list of all of the uh, students. Um, in that case, there's no reason for you to share a counselor account. You can just all use your um, separate ones and you can all sign up separately. What I would say is one of the things that we've been given feedback on is that, you know, with a lot of schools, counselors will be responsible for students, let's say with surnames A to E or you know, F to H. Um, and so one of the things that we're working on in a newer version of the counselor portal, which uh, I hope will come out later this year, is um, being able to separate the students by counselor so that you can only see the students that you're responsible for. Uh, but for the moment, what I would say is, um, you know, as many counselors as you want can sign up for your school and, and they'll all see the same information. And then our next question is um, about community-based organizations. And so um, why do you say that you have built out a whole different platform for community-based organizations? Um, our students are no different from other students. Uh, sorry, so why do I say we've built out a different platform for CBOs? Um, I'm not completely sure what that was referring to. Um, so uh, your, your, the CBO students and any other students can use Going Merry in exactly the same way. So any student can sign up. There's never a difference. I guess this might be referring to uh, independent counselors um, and counselors at CBOs. So um, I'm guessing a, a little bit here, Sarah. Um, so if the, if the person has a follow up that's more specific, um, that might help. But what, what I can tell you is as a counselor, when you sign up, uh, you have to provide your high school um, to be able to create your counselor account. Uh, that's just because at the moment we focused on um, high school counselors rather than um, uh, IECs. Um, but one of the things that we're doing in this new counselor portal, as I say, that's hopefully coming late this year, is um, allowing counselors who are not associated with a particular high school uh, to be able to sign up as well. And that will obviously apply to um, CBOs as well. Um, as I say, at the moment, uh, it's we focus more on the um, counselors linked to specific schools, but want to be very, very clear. No students don't have to have their counselor signed up or using Going May. Any student across the US can sign up and create their account. Um, no one is ever treated sort of differently. All right. Um, our next question. Um, is uh, I work with Native, com Native American community and my students range from high school to graduate level. Does this site help graduate level students? Yeah, so there are um, scholarships available for graduate students. I'd say um, that our focus really is on high school um, and uh, undergraduates. Um, and so I would you know, feel more confident that we're gonna be able to help uh, those students find uh, lots of different scholarships. For um, graduate level, there definitely are ones available. Um, but the, the honest reality is that there are just less um, scholarships for graduate students. I think, honestly, your best bet with as a graduate student is really speaking to the university that you're looking to attend to see what um, scholarships they have. Uh, often, they'll have endowed scholarships um, that may be uh, harder to find out about. Um, and so that's where I would start as a uh, graduate student. And then this next question is regarding students um, who may have um, an undocumented status, DACA status, but the question mm -hmm. is, um, are, what about our students who are not fully citizens, um, whose status is a bit fuzzy, but live in our communities and have been successful in our high school? Um, they really need scholarship monies and um, needing your good advice for these students. Yeah, so um, I think one of the, the coolest things um, we had uh, uh, actually now about two years ago was uh, starting to work with an organization called Golden Door. 
um, and they have uh, four million dollars of um, uh, scholarships uh, specifically for undocumented students. Um, unfortunately, that, that 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 deadline actually is in October, so it's a really early one. Um, so that one isn't live at the moment, uh, but that's definitely one that your students can uh, apply to uh, later on. The, the other big organization for undocumented students is the dream.us. Unfortunately, also their deadline has passed for this year. Um, but that's where if I was um, your students, I would focus on. What I would end by saying, though, is a lot of the scholarships we have on our uh, ongoing, Mary, are um, for uh, all residents of the US. Um, actually, it's a real minority that require you to be a citizen. So um, the best thing is if the student fills out their profile as normal, um, and um, they can just leave the citizen question blank, uh, and that will just then show them the scholarships that they can still apply for given that. Thank you. Um, this next question, how does Going Mary make money? Yeah, really important question. So two ways. Um, one is, uh, as I say, through these newer products, um, this is more a way certainly of, of covering our costs, but um, is through, for the uh, federal and state government aid applications, uh, what we tend to do there is work with um, high schools who can purchase uh, accounts for their students. Um, a lot of the high schools we work with are focused on trying to improve the FAFSA application rate uh, and the state aid application rate. Uh, and so we work with the high schools, um, again, just specific to the government aid uh, to purchase accounts for us to help the students uh, do that. Um, as I talked on, on, on the webinar, students also can sign up individually for that. We wanted to make sure it wasn't only open to uh, schools uh, who had, had prepaid. Uh, but that's um, you know, one way. Uh, but the, the second main way is we charge a fee to the large uh, national scholarship organizations. Um, and those can be corporations, again, like Hewlett Packard. Um, but it can also be the colleges who uh, we help manage their uh, scholarships as well. Um, and they pay us a fee to use our software to set the eligibility requirements, set the questions uh, that students have to answer. Uh, and then review the applications that they've uh, received. Um, so it's those two, um, two, two ways mainly. Uh, and again, we always try and be super transparent about that. So um, if you have uh, any feedback or thoughts, then, then please do let us know. Um, and again, local scholarships is, is always a free service. So it was important for us to have local scholarships just to make the site more helpful. And we're also aware that those organizations are less able to pay. Um, so that's always free for them. Great, thanks, Charlie. This is Claire. Sarah had to step off for a minute, so I'm asking questions now. Great. So the next question is, how seamless is the process for local scholarships from year to year when counseling staff changes? Are the scholarships tied to one counselor or to a school? Yeah, and now I'll make sure I answer. Um, I'll, uh, I, I know we need to, to end in, in a few minutes, so I'll, I'll sort of answer rapidly. And, and I'll, I can also provide my email address to um, uh, if there are any uh, follow up ones. Um, if you've added your scholarships onto Going Mary, um, like a lot of our schools do, and you want to do it for the next year, it's literally just a case of um, clicking activate. So um, you just need to reach out to us to say, yep, all of our scholarships are being offered again. Um, this is the ones where I need to update it. For example, there's a new deadline, you know, a, a couple of weeks later, or there's a new award amount. Um, but it's um, yeah, really easy to update them. The, the process of adding them in the first place does take a little bit more time, uh, but renewing them is simple. And they are actually not tied to you as a counselor, but they're tied to the high school. Great, thanks. Um, let me just take one more peek here. There are, there are a couple of questions here that I'm not sure if you're able to answer in the time that we have left, Charlie, but I'll ask the question and you can see if you have time enough to answer it. So it goes back to the question about the CBOs. Um, so the, the person said, I am a CBO counselor. When I tried to sign up for an account, I got the message that you had to build out a new platform. That seemed very confusing and unnecessary. Got it. Yeah, so, so this is, um, uh, thanks for, for following up on, on that. 
Um, this is um, what, what I mentioned at the moment, uh, the creating a counselor account is, um, requires you to be linked to a high school. Um, and so if you are a, a CBO counselor, if you are working with one high school in particular, um, then we can absolutely support that and, and you know, a couple of schools. Uh, but at the moment, um, uh, and unfortunately, it's just um, a function of us uh, having limited resources uh, to be able to build out everything that we'd like to build out, is um, our counselor portal isn't um, uh, open to all uh, independent uh, counselors. Uh, what, what I mentioned in terms of the plan to have a new counselor portal later this year, then will uh, allow that. Um, so yeah, I, I apologize um, if, if that feels, um, uh, yeah, I think confusing or unnecessary you said, which, which I get, uh, but it's, we had to, just from a technical perspective, our engineering team had to work out which one to prioritize um, so that we could get a counselor portal um, out for this year. And we took the view that um, uh, it was really important to make sure that the um, uh, counselors at each high school would be able to track what their students are doing. So um, if you are working as a CBO for, with one main school district or, or school, then um, let me know and we can add you onto that. And, and otherwise, um, uh, as I say, uh, later this year, we'll then be able to do that properly. So uh, apologies that that's not uh, set up perfectly yet. All right, well, at this time, we have had a chance to go through all of our questions. And so I really appreciate taking the time to give us some great level of detail. And so um, at this point, Charlie, if there's um, any final things that you want to add for us, um, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, well, well, thank you, um, Sarah. Thank you, Claire, as well, for jumping in, and, and Aaron for, and Aaron and Max for, for helping set everything up. Um, you know, from from our side, uh, we are very aware of the uh, increased focus on affordability, given everything that's happened uh, with uh, coronavirus. There are still um, external scholarships available. Being you know transparent with you, uh, unfortunately, uh, a lot of them, as someone pointed out, have had deadlines already passed for this year but there are still scholarships that, that your students can be applying to. Um, and, you know, particularly for juniors that are just starting the process, uh, it's a really good way to just sort of think about affordability right from the start. Um, I would say definitely worth trying with those financial aid appeals, um, uh, appeal letters as well, because I, I do think that's going to be relevant for a lot of students. But, you know, otherwise, you know, really appreciate you taking the time to, to all of you to, to join. Um, my email address is charlie at goingmary.com um, you know if you have ideas for us feedback concerns uh, criticisms we really love to hear them because it allows us to keep making going merry better um, so uh, do do let me know and as i say otherwise um thank you and and stay safe uh, through all this thank you so much and so just to wrap us up um this was the first in our happy hour webinar series and we will be ha we have two more scheduled um so the first one the next one will be may 8th which will be about transfer credits um and then we have one scheduled for may 22nd um telling unique stories after COVID 19. so you'll be receiving emails to register for those you can also register on the PANACAC website um, and if you yourself are interested in hosting a webinar, please do contact um, PANACAC and we would be happy to help facilitate that. And then my final um, piece of information is just to invite you all and remind and encourage you that we will be having our um, PANACAC membership meeting on May 22nd at 11 a.m. This will be a virtual membership meeting. Um, watch your email, it will contain all of the details and information that you need. And we um, hope you're able to join us as we'll be bringing in the new PANAC Act board and have a lot of other information to share. So with that, I wish you a wonderful rest of your day and a great weekend. Take care.